turning away from sin, a hatred for the things that God hates and a love for the things that God loves, a growing in holiness and a desire not to be like Britney Spears, not to be like the world, and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. I didn't come here to get amens. I didn't come here to be applauded. I'm talking about you. People so many times come up to me and they say, Oh, I'd love to follow you into Romania. I'd love to follow you into the Ukraine. I'd love to preach where you preached and planted churches in Peru in the jungle. And I tell them, No, you wouldn't. They say, Yes, I would. I say, No, you wouldn't. Why? Because you'd be excommunicated from the church down there. What we need to see, I'm not trying to be hard for the sake of being hard. Do you realize how much love it takes to stand before 5,000 people and tell them that American Christianity is almost totally wrong? Do you know what it's going to cost me to never be asked back again to something like this? To be unpopular? Do you know why you do it? You don't do it because you get paid well. You don't do it because men love you. You do it because you love men and because more than that you want to honor God. I want to tell you something. We are going to go into Scripture, and I want you to look at it as it really is. Stop comparing yourself with others who call themselves Christians, who compare themselves with others who call themselves Christians. Compare yourself to the Scripture. When someone, a young person, comes to a pastor or a youth minister and says, I'm not sure whether or not I'm saved, the youth minister will usually throw out a cliche. Well, was there ever a time in your life when you prayed and asked Jesus to come into your heart? Well, yes. Were you sincere? Well, I don't know, but I think so. Well, you need to tell Satan to stop bothering you. Did you write it in the back of your book, the back of the Bible, like the evangelist told you when you got saved, to write down the date so that any time you doubted, you could point him to the Bible? What superstition has overcome our denomination? You know what the Bible tells Christians to do? Examine yourself. Test yourself in light of Scripture to see if you are in the faith. Test yourself to see if you're Christian. Do you realize if I dismissed us right now and told everyone to go knock on every door in this city, do you know what we would find out? 99% of the people, at least in this city, believe themselves to be believers. If you go back to your hometown and knock on every door, because I went back to my hometown after I got saved and knocked on every door, and you know what I found out? Everyone in my town is a Christian. 85% of them do not go to church, and those who do go to church are not concerned about holiness, they're not concerned about serving, they're not concerned about being separate from the world, they're not concerned about the gospel being preached among the nations, but bless God, they're saved. Why are they saved? Because some evangelist who should have spent less time preaching and more time studying his Bible told them they were saved. And he did it so that he could brag about how many people came forward in his next revival. I love you. And there are men here who love you. And I want to go into Scripture now, now that I've shocked you into life. I want you to listen to me. Listen to the Word of God and begin to ask yourself some questions. First of all, enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it. There is a narrow gate. And you know, historically, one of the reasons I'm a Southern Baptist is because the Southern Baptists have always been quick. When other denominations have failed to realize this, the Southern, Southern Baptists have always been quick to realize that there is one gate. There is one God. There is one mediator between God and man, and his name is Jesus Christ. It's not multiple choice. Not every road leads to Rome. As a denomination, we have always told people what Jesus told people. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So I praise God for that, that the only way any human being on this earth will ever be saved is through Jesus Christ. And that is all. Because you need to realize the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you have no idea what that means. That we were born radically depraved and God-hating. That we would have never sought God, never come to God. We have rebelled against God, broken every law. It's not just an issue that you have sinned. The issue is you've never done anything but sin. 
The Bible says in the prophets that even our greatest works are like filthy rags before God. And because of that, you know what we deserve? The wrath of God. The holy hatred of God. You say, now wait a minute. God doesn't hate anybody. God is love. No, my friend. You need to understand something. Jesus Christ taught, the prophets taught, the apostles taught this. That apart from the grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord, the only thing left for you is the wrath, the fierce anger of God. Because of your rebellion and your sin. When I speak in universities, they're always quick to point out, no, God cannot hate because God is love. And I tell you, God must hate because God is love. You see, I love children, therefore I hate abortion. If I love that which is holy, I must hate that which is unholy. God is a holy God. That's something that the Americans have forgotten. Many of the things that you love to do, God hates. Did you know that? Pray for revival. You're going to have a youth meeting. You want God to move. But before you go there, you watch programs on television that God absolutely despises. And then you wonder why the Holy Spirit hasn't fallen on a place and why you have to create false fire and false excitement. Because God's not in it. God is a holy God. And the only way you and I could ever be reconciled to a holy God is through the death of God's own Son. When He hung on that tree. Now listen to me. If you're saved here tonight, you're not saved because the Romans and Jews rejected Jesus. You're not saved because they put a crown of thorns on his head. You're not saved because they ran a spear through his side. And you're not saved even because they nailed him to a cross. Do you know why you're saved if you are saved? Because when Jesus Christ was hanging on that cross, he bore your sin, the sin of God's people, and all the fierce wrath of God that should fall upon you fell upon his only begotten son. Someone had to pay that price. Someone had to die. It was God the Father who crushed His only begotten Son, according to Isaiah 53. It says it pleased Yahweh to crush Him. People say the cross is a sign of how much man is worth. That's not true. The cross is a sign of how depraved we really are. That it took the death of God's own Son the only thing that could save a people like us was the death of God's own Son under the wrath of His own Father paying the price. Rising again from the dead. Powerful to save. This is the Gospel of Jesus. Now what are you called upon to do? You say you go through the narrow gate. How do you do that? Jesus said the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. What must you do? In Mark He tells us, repent and believe the Gospel. You say, Brother Paul, I got saved by praying and asking Jesus Christ into my heart. And I'm sure you did. But you weren't saved by a magic formula or some words you repeated after someone else. You were saved because you repented of your sins and you believed. And not only did you do that in the past, you continue to do it even until now. Because when Jesus, a proper translation of that verse he gave is this. The kingdom of God has come. The time is fulfilled. Now, spend the rest of your life repenting of your sins and believing in me. Conversion is not like a flu shot. Oh, I did that. I repented. I believed. The question is, my friend, are you continuing to repent of sin? Are you continuing to believe? Because he who began a good work in you will finish it.